Thank you so much, guys. Into our last game of the day. I hope you guys have had a fantastic day. There's been a lot of really fun matches, specifically that last one. If you missed out, you gotta go back a little later tonight oh, sure. to watch that one. But for now, you gotta watch this one. As we got Solar Rig going up against Team Oplon here, Beatdown. That's right. And as usual, we're seeing a lot of mid lane bans taken out right <laughs> off the are. bat just because of how many uh, strong ones are available. Worth noting, too, the Xerath taken off the board immediately. Just some instant respect paid over to Scarlet just because of how he's playing it. That's right. And, well, let's see what we get first. How about a Jinx right in the mix for us? So that is what's going to be locked in. We have seen the Threshes' as first picks, the Jinxes as well, and it would probably make a lot of sense if Team Oplon want to remove that Jinx and Thresh combo. That's right. Could very well see Tiger pull out the Aphelios if they wanted to grab. That seems to be the combo. It's just been winning all on the day. It's 3-0 now here in day two. And uh, it's interesting, too, to note that we're seeing the Jinx come out from Raza. He was a player. We did have some questions about his early performances last week. Right. Performed very well yesterday on the Syndra. <laughs> a little bit uh, unorthodox in the bot lane, despite how popular it is. But now today, we'll see him get it, take another go at the, uh, the Jinx. Will be this in Zhao, and wow, we're cruising wow. through this draft right now, Beat Sound. They're not waiting for anything. They know exactly what they want. We've seen a lot of Zin Zhao on the day. Doesn't uh, feel like it's been as successful today as some of our other days here throughout week one True. Um, and at week two. But they are also going to, of course, pair this with the Orn, give themselves some hard engage here on the top side, too. Right. So far, it makes sense. I mean, Joko, it has been one of his most played champs so far here in this last yeah. week, is, uh, over last week and this week. And the thing, too, is that Joko, especially yesterday, has playing pretty lights out on this pick, well. so I think it's really nice. Yeah, he has recovered very well, <laughs> and I like that we're throwing Keo onto something like the Ord. He's the new player on the roster. He was the one not necessarily playing very badly, but when we're waiting for players to really gel, take some time to get used to what's going on, I think putting them on a very high utility pick, one that doesn't need to smoke lane or anything like sure. that, but can still have value is good. I agree with you, absolutely. We'll see how Keo is going to be able to fare. The last pick that comes through here in phase one is going to be a Lee Sin here for Brunus. So going to have that Xin Zhao Lee Sin matchup that we've had plenty of times before. And now we got lots of mid laners taken away here in phase My one. God. How about phase two? We're going to pinch that pool out a little bit more here as LeBlanc and Victor also removed. Clearly the handshake, not enough mid laners have been taken <laughs> out of the picture. So of course they're going to just go ahead and do that. And um, it just makes me wonder what we're going to see here at this point. I mean, you have all the popular ones taken, some niche ones taken out too. The Braum, just for good measure, when you think about how Oplon are probably wanting to move forward into Solary's composition. And I think also pairing it with that Orn would uh, be something to deal with. Sure, absolutely it would be. Braum going to be removed and make sure that things are going to be at least a little bit easier in that bot side, not just absorbing all this damage here from Nephelios. Also can lock him down with concussive blows and glacial fissures and whatnot. And then just one more ban just thrown up here towards the top side. You don't want the Gwen playing into True. the Orn. We know what can happen is that game gets a little bit later and as she scales up. That's right. And it'll make she's very difficult to deal in the side lane, especially now that you've revealed you're playing the Orn. We mm -hmm. could see the Camille come through. Would go for a lot of dive follow-up for Oplon's composition here. We haven't seen Darlick bring it out yet, especially with how often she's banned. But I think that's something we could see her go, uh, see them go towards. But actually, it's going to be the Gragas. Gragas coming in, and I like that. I like the Gragas too. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, we got to see, of course, like the Wonder Out play, of course, in LEC. Yeah. Last season, right, little one v three action. You can really do quite a bit of damage, be a front line, and actually engage. It feels like you have, you know, all these tools available to yourself here. I think really nice, you know, into the Orn matchups. You're not really under a lot of threat. No, and it's nice too because in these team fights, you have a way at range to be able to stop that call of the Forge God if you play it just right. Yeah. Being able to cancel that R2. And now, Scarlet, we're wondering what he's going to pilot in the mid lane. We think he's been playing really well so far. And the Syndra, of course, being another one that offers a lot of really great disengage. So when people like Darlick, like Brunez are going to be going into them, that Scatter of the Week's going to do a lot of good. Yeah, it also feels like a takeaway from Pang. That's been one of his go-to right. so far where he has looked good. I think he has been the shining star so far on Team Oplon. And if you can get him on something a little bit different with already a pinched mid lane pool, you might put yourself in a a more favorable position, but Nautilus, the last pick that comes through, that is going to be the support paired up here with the Jinx in the bot side. That's right, and the hover, of course, never to be taken seriously. Oplon looking to round out their composition in the mid lane here. And I mean, Malphite admit it technically exists, but is anybody going to lock it in? I don't actually think so. So Zoe <laughs> would definitely make a little more sense. Good. You get priority for the most part in the early lane. And with that Sleepy Trouble, you can do a lot of setting up for Brunez. 
Yeah, I'm waiting for uh, Azza right now to switch over from that heal to that cleanse. I think yes. that's probably what's going <laughs> to happen, but we'll see. We'll see indeed. Uh, overall, coming in here, kind of rounding us out, this should be a good look. And, you know, just to kind of dive into Team Oplon for a second, it does feel like they have had some shining moments. We saw Tiger play the Jin yesterday. He had right. a bomb, uh, f excuse me, phenomenal oh, performance. Oh, Solari going up against Team Oplon. Here we go, as it's going to be. A great one to finish it off for date number two in week number two. And you can see already a five-man invade for Solari to see if they could try to catch anyone off guard. Really nice. The hook, the root on the steal back in this early game, level one, would be really nice if they managed to pick somebody off. So it's worth fishing for. We're already seeing actually a lot of people under pressure at various ways. They actually managed to, on the side of offline, do get some early vision on Tajoko. I think that's going to be very important, just get an idea of where he is, so the laners of offline do not get caught off guard. The ward going down is going to give them that initial vision. Actually, they got a ward on both initial camps here, wow. blue and red, so they're absolutely going to know where Joko is starting off, and I feel like that's actually such a big move here for Team Loplon. It's really small, but knowing where Joko starts is important because we've seen him be one of the few junglers in League that's went for these level 3 ganks, that it's went for you know, the 3 camps into 3 minutes, see if you can try to get something happening. Bot, and considering that he's starting in the top side on the blue, I feel like that's also going to be a potential play for him to see if he can maybe get something going on to Tiger and Absolute here in the bot side. And that's going to be the thing too, also having the red Worded does mean that Offlon's bot lane Tiger Absolute should have an idea of around the time he's actually going to show up on that side of the map as well. So any early information, much appreciated here, as this early game is going to be very important for Team Offlon. You think about Azza on this Jinx, if he does manage to really get himself going, he is going to be that hyper carry, and it's going to be hard to deal with for Team Offlon. Scarlet, one of the mid laners that have shown us just so many different champions. I think yeah. he might have played a different champion every single game. I think, so I think he's as well. played Victor. We've seen a Zerath, his Castle win after yesterday. That's right. <laughs> and now the Syndra. So a very versatile mid lane here for us. And uh, Scarlet has certainly surprised with a lot of the setups and just how important of a PC he is actually to Solari as a whole. Right. And honestly, Steelback, another player we can talk about too, spent so much time playing with Joko. And it just, with the way they link up, the way they make plays happen, you can just see the synergy from a mile away. Unfortunately, Joko isn't there right now. Brunez is, and I think Oplon might have their first play of the game. I feel like this is going to be... Oh, nice left. Oh, All right, not what I was about to say, but it isn't going to be the Lantern taken, actually. Absolute Flash is a little too far forward, and it's going to eliminate the range of the Lantern. But what I was going to say is the fact that Brutus is probably expecting Joko to be here. And now he is here Ooh. with the hook. Oh, oh, oh. In between the uprights. Still back. Can't find the angle, but Joko still going to try to move on in. Will actually receive quite a bit of damage in return. And now will likely actually be forced off the scuttle crab. Wow, so I mean... With the nerfs, it's not as big of a feels bad, but overall, positive play early on from again. Oplon. Oh my god, he is. Oh, Joko. Oh my god, the play is. Deal back. He is left all alone. That's a kill for sure. It's unfortunately going to go over to Absolute, but has some. He wants no more. Flash of the flash. Oh, and what a turn. Joko stays too long, and Team Oplon will punish. Oplon are here to play, Austin. They want their first win, and they're playing this early game very, very aggressive. The keys to almost every team's success today who grabbed that Ophelios Thresh was that early game pressure, being able to give them the tools to succeed, allow them to get this gold lead so that Tiger can just scale up to being that nightmare, or as Ravi said, 200 years. <laughs> 200 years. Wow, that is, I think, just over-aggression. We know they want to affect this bot lane, but we'll take a look at it again where Joko thinks he has this window of timing to come back. Right, and he's hoping, okay, he's going on Scuttlecrab. We can make this happen really uh, quick, but it's, yeah, it's steal back. He ends up missing the dredge line, and they're thinking, damn, we've almost, we've kind of hard committed. What do we do here? And I think that disconnect is what really causes them to fall apart here. Brunus with the flash, also landing That's the sonic confidence. wave. And a lot of good happening there for Team Oplon. A lot of bad, unfortunately, here for Solary. Flash engage for Sealback. Not usually an error we see him make, especially on these engaged support champions. Tries to predict the movement. Feels like over to the right-hand side and will predict incorrectly. And that is really the problem with uh, Nautilus sometimes. Their beat down where it's like, if you miss, sometimes you go into the terrain and it pulls you right in. Yeah, and you're like, wait a second, wait <laughs> a second, take it back. I don't like it, but you can't. <laughs> You just can't as 
this can't really take back this early laning phase here too for Team Solary. They are gonna have to probably take it easy as Joko has now left the bottom side of the map, continue clearing up his top side. Gonna see if he's gonna be able to find any angles here. You could look bot, you could especially look mid, I think, if you're Joko. Scarlet has been pretty good with these scatter of the weeks, but at the moment he's looking for his first buy. Uh, the bot lane right now for Solary in a really bad position. They're actually zoned off the wave entirely. They don't know if Brunus is going to come back down here and regank again because this wave is shoving in and it is now going to be frozen for the side of Team Opla. And they find themselves in a fabulous position right now as a lot of XP and gold currently being lost for Azza and the Steelback. Pings. They need Joko, Joko to come down here. You saw the assist pings. They're gonna try to get back in, but now you also have Brunus on the bot side of the map. That's right, Brunus could make the play right now. Joko isn't quite there. Of course, they oh, don't no. actually know it. And Absolute, he's gonna be looking. He has the Hex Flash and he's channeling. It is going to get matched here, though. Joko in position. Let's see. Absolute. He's going to oh, go nice. the hook, but the hook in return comes the through. Play. Bursting down. Absolute. The heal. the heal comes out, but they'll still find the kill. Joko, can he escape? It looks like he'll be able to. So Solary actually able to recover a bit as they get a kill back. And it was nice from Steelback. He, as soon as he saw the Hex Flash, he's like, okay, I need to go in on this Thresh. And it's enough time for Joko to actually become a part of this skirmish. So they get something back on this bottom side of the map. Of course, both kills were traded amongst junglers so not going to do a whole lot of affecting this bottom side as a whole that freeze though on the other hand did already you're seeing tiger up about a wave's worth of cs and every little bit it adds up it does add up and we take a look i think for the first time in the top lane there's not a whole lot happening <laughs> looks like darlick's gonna use the explosive cask just to try and clear out the wave here as he's probably looking for a reset doesn't have a whole lot of mana uh, but won't have the TP available to get back to lane fairly quickly. So we'll have to do the little waddle here on Gragas to get all the way back to lane. But we'll just be pretty much even across the board in the top side here. And as you mentioned it, it is going to be as a down and will opt in for some berserkers just to try to get some additional movement speed. He knows there's already been a lot of attention down to the bot side. Yep. And how about some more because Brunus is going to start up this ocean drake. That's right. Ward over the wall too, just to make sure nobody can sneak up on him, especially Steelback who's in the area. But ultimately this bottom control has been great for Oplon. The early minutes of the game will earn them dragon number one. And I mean, all this pressure, you could have Tiger shove this wave out, reset, go for the Herald that's coming up in less than a minute as so many teams often do. And you're going to get the notification. Of course, the dragon has been secured, which might give them that window that you just talked about. We'll be up here in about 10 seconds or so. And you can already see some vision actually being laid down there from Darlick. If they do go for it, well, the pink ward is going to be able to spot them out. Back to farming we go. Both junglers now at level six. And we always talk about the Lee Sin hitting level six. That's where you want to yep. get very active. You want to look for some of these kicks to see if you can actually find any windows of opportunity to get some successful ganks off. Scarlet did get the flash out of Pang there a little bit earlier as we panned away. But now it looks like Solary have pulled the rift out and they're going to try to see if they can secure it. Yeah, the vision has notified off so they could go and force this one out here. Pang holding on to the cleanse. Here it comes. Call the Forge God. How many will it hit? Hits Pang and hits him hard, but he's got the cleanse available to him. And now it's okay. the kick. Joko gets thrown into the body slam. Won't even use the caressing guard. He'll be taken down. Very nice setup for Team Oplon to get one back. It couldn't be cleaner. Alley-oop between top <laughs> and jungle. Even though you get the Rift Herald, you do end up trading your life for it. And look who's in the air. Area Scarlet, you don't get that solo bolo you might be looking for. Early game, pretty solid here from offline. Now, the only thing I'm looking to see is if they actually want to continue this up into the middle parts of the game, what are you gonna do about this Rift Herald? Are you gonna be able to actually minimize its impact as we've seen a lot of teams do, or will Solary use that to potentially swing back in their favor? Paying under a lot of pressure right now. Scarlet getting that blue adds a lot of additional kill threat. Now we get to walk up and start to work towards that very first turret plate here in the mid lane. Bot looks like it's gonna take a reset. Will be interesting to see what Tiger comes back with. Now he's gonna be pretty close to his first item. I think the big key is whenever the other AD carry opts in for Berserkers, it does delay your very first mythic quite a bit, which is obviously extremely important here for our AD carries. You mm -hmm. even got Gragas in between towers right now. Like, listen, nothing's happening top. I'm just gonna start farming in between waves and force you to farm under tower right now, buddy. That's right. I mean, after <laughs> Jogo dies, you know he, you got the inkling that he cleared up the top side. So he's able to proxy this wave pretty easily just because you know Joko's on the other end of the map here. So it's no danger at all for Darlick. TP's still locked 
for the moment, not unleashed as a lot of people are actually moving to the mid lane here. Even Aza, they want all this pressure. They want to try and whittle down these turret plays so they can try and take it with this Rift Herald. They are going to drop it down. Pang looking for some poke. Does land the Sleepy Trouble bubble. And it's oh, right nice into kick. the explosive cask. cask again. Another nice setup, but are they done? Absolute. Absolute. Drops the oh, box, the lands hook. the hook. The kick again. Joko behind enemy lines, but it's a massive knock up here from Orn. Kyo presses forward. They do get one back as Absolute is going to drop, but it looks like now everyone going to go their separate ways. Nicely done by Team Oplon in a 4v5 scenario, mind you. It's at their turret, but this is still positive for many reasons. One, you don't lose that first turret over to Solary. Two, your AD carry, Tiger, has just been chilling in the bot lane, farming wave after wave, plate after plate. My man is eating today, Austin. Yeah, it sure is. It always feels so good as the AD carry. Oh it, it, for some reason, yeah. it always seems to be the Aphelios yeah. that's left alone in the bot lane here to collect free turret plates. No, you, you can't do that whatsoever because now we're going to see a massive lead in favor of Tiger, and that's what you want here as it's going to be one of your late game scalers, one of your main DPSs here of this squad. So Team Oplon, it felt like they've actually been able to really neutralize a lot of what Team Solary are actually good at in the early stages of the game. And I mean, Team Oplon do find themselves up 1K. Man, this has been a really great early game for them so far. They did manage to neutralize the Herald like I was expecting. And now at this point we have Keo. Looking for the 1v1, but ultimately it's Gragas, and they're just both very tanky. You see their HPs going down very, very <laughs> slowly. Fight, baby. Yeah, honestly, not a whole <laughs> lot's going to come of this one, but overall, still very positive for Oplon. They have the first dragon. They've managed to win a lot of these fights here. Now with uh, their second dragon coming up in about 45 seconds, they can start to uh, push some of this pressure into this river and start to try and take control as you see Brunez and Absolute walking their way through. Jungler nearby, Joko going to be on the Raptors, so just going to be basically a guide for Tiger to get into the river here, as they're going to try to eliminate some of that vision that was also set up. Pink Ward's going down, and now it's Pang waiting. Also level 10 will be able to land some of these very crucial paddle stars that are going to really start to tag up some of the squishier carries, like Scarlet, like Azza. If they ever misstep, it is going to hurt. But Solary are right back here. They're ready for it. The dragon just about to spawn here for us, B-Town. That's right. Mid is cleared. The next waves will crash into the middle, but they've walked out of the river. Solary have given away what pressure they had in this area. So it's going to be offline taking another dragon as Joko walks away here. They don't want to fight. It looks like they're not feeling it at the moment, especially with Tiger. As the Kraken Slayer finished with Azza not quite there yet. So that means this is it. Halfway to Seoul. And it's a Chemtech Soul here for Oplon. They actually are on their way to potentially upsetting. This is exactly what I talked about, right? You go for the Berserkers. It delays your Mythic. Tiger yes. has it. He's been able to get... A uh, majority of the plates here, I want to say the majority of them are also solo, yeah. too, going to just him. So, so he is ready to scrap in this 1v1 if it ever comes down to it. And Azza essentially just has to respect it. But it is going to hurt. And I mean, a huge part of this gold lead that Team Oplon have built up has been in the mid lane, has been now in the bot lane here, too. But we are going to get that second dragon. And that means that it's going to be a chem tech rift here for us. And maybe not what you want to see if you're Team Solary. It's not when you want to see when there is a Zoe in the game as well. As you have to well, think about yes. bubbles over the wall. Point. Guess what? Bubbles from five feet in front of you because you can't <laughs> see, which is a, a really dangerous thing to have to worry about. It does make face checking um, one more prevalent to more painful. So it is a lot harder for the team who is behind to really get that vision control well under control here. And you can see it, Oplon, they've now set up some deep vision here, even a pink on their side of the map, which I like. It's going to make it harder for Solary to actually move in and set up this vision, at least unknowingly, or set a trap. And I mean, this is where Team Oplon have been so good. We touched on it before getting into the game. If you watch, you know, every single game from Team Oplon and you look at the first 15 minutes, you're like, wow, this yeah. is such a good squad. It looks yeah. like they just have control over the objectives. They're stacking dragons oh, and they're also making plays because Scarlet has just been kicked into the mix. But can they follow it up? Hook is actually going to go over to Joko as they'll find the snipe and take down Scarlet. Oh, darling. And they find it. There's the flash just to make sure he is not getting put back into the enemy team. That's right. But now Tiger. Oh. 
we actually have that call of the Forge God to clear the wave. No way they could follow. Big knockup, but do they have the damage? Jinx is Tiger here, Asta dead. found one, looking for the reset. She is getting excited. Orn finds the second as Keo claims his first kill of the game. They'll actually be able to respond up the back end of an excellent call of the Forge God. Yeah, and a nice follow up from Steelback, although he trades for it. Asta finally gets himself on the board, much needed gold, and it helps that now this turret is also gonna go down. Hello. Oh. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> He's not doing too good right now. Nope. As is gonna have to take a quick little stop back to the base here, get some of that health back. As that's gonna actually hurt quite a bit, but maybe feels confident enough to push out at least one more wave. And now that also means that Joko wants to try his hand at being able to secure here another rift in the top side. Really nice play overall from Solary to be able to get them back into the game a little bit in terms of the gold deficit they were in, and also just get some control on the map. Now they have this mid shoved in. Now nobody is there to answer. Bottom lane, Darlick is on his way. Brunez is like, hmm, I've made a mistake. Yeah, oh, they won't even fight him. punished at least. Wow, okay, that's nice. At least the Lantern was also nearby, just in case, so Absolute could have got him out of harm's way, but yeah, will not be able to punish. Looks like they just want to take the objective and get out. They did not have the AD carry on the map either, so did not want to get outnumbered in the exchange. However, that being said, means that the fast track over to mid is no problem. Team Oplon find a very clean rotation and will take down the mid lane tower. Also some jungle camps here, so they are going to invade, move through this camp fog, and again, you're at the point, Zoe's here, so you got to be very careful as you approach it. And on the bounce back, Oplon get not one, but two turrets, putting them right back into the lead here, Austin, with about, uh, about one and a half thousand gold. And you're seeing it, Pang, he's fishing for these bubbles. Oh, Joko, oh, he's gonna get hooked up ya. here, following it up, and oh, wow. get a lot of healing back with the Gore Drinker, but ultimately it will not be enough. No one there to support him, they'll let him go. Darlick going deep into the back line, throws Scarlet into the wall with the ultimate here, but damage is done right back, and Darlick is too far forward, so they're gonna be able to get one back here, one for one overall. And that's a much needed kill on Solary's side. Uh, you end up getting top for jungle here, but with no objectives up just yet. I mean, Joko will be back before this dragon is up. It's not as big a deal here. But honestly, let's talk about Oplon for a second, dude. For, yeah, we're past 15 minutes. We are. We are at 17. They're still making these smart plays into the jungle, punishing Solary for pushing up too far. Did Darlick get a little too ahead of himself? Yeah, but it, it, it's still, I think, a pretty solid performance. And so far, the best we've seen from Oplon, they are actually, I mean, look at the control they have on this bottom side of the map. They're 30 seconds away from potentially their sole point. TP comes in, Darlick wants to get in the mix for this soul point that you're alluding to. It's just a matter of can Solary get into the river. It's gonna have to be Keo that really leads the charge right with Steelback here. Darlick is very tanky at this point in time as well. And he's gonna be able to zone them away. Explosive cask up very soon, but the call of the Forge God is gonna come in and finds a knockup onto two. Darlick under fire in some There's trouble. Should end up dropping and Joko finds the kill. Pang on the side. Looks like he should be able to get himself out, but Solary find a window, and they're going to be able to take their first strike. That's right, and I mean, Oplon not going to push their luck, realize they've lost their top and are just going to go ahead and let this dragon go through. This is still not too big of a deal, but Solary are once again about close to just evening out this gold lead here. Rift Herald is going to go down. They're going to guide it in, them being the bottom side of Solary. And so far, I think things have kind of gone back to a crawl now. You can see the gold lead starting to even up and everybody is just resetting, getting back on the map here. O Oplon, they're getting to the point where things usually do struggle for them, but I think so far, things have been pretty good. Have been solid. Solary still keeping themselves in the game. This is something that we have known from them. You can never count them out. And as much as you look at a couple of dragons sure going over, a couple of kills in advantage of Team Oplon, this game, incredibly close. 500 gold separating the two at the moment here. So it is still anyone's game. And on top of that, you have two scaling 80 carries. So both going to be ready to team fight here, working towards three items. Keo is walking up in the river. They want to take control around the Baron and maybe even look for a kill. That's a flash there from Bruno. That will be the hook that ends up landing, but they can't follow the death sentence. So they'll just take the flash and walk out. Still no call of the Forge God. So Keo and the rest of Solary want to walk this one out. And honestly, Tiger is doing a bit of damage. That was a couple autos and Keo lost a, a good chunk of his health here. So they're just going to go back, pushing out mid. Solary back into their own jungle as again, Oplon 
gonna have control. First move at a lot of these neutral areas of the map here. You can see it. They're pushing this mid wave and they're clearing up top as well, just so they have all the vision necessary when this Baron starts up. And honestly, the way their comp works too, if Solari want to move right into them, I think Pang especially is very happy about that. See, this is where we start to worry about Team Op Line. Oh, and now you're really gonna worried because the engage is coming in. It's a three man knockup. Steel back goes in, but the explosive gas sends everyone flying on Solari, but they still take down the jungler. Looking on Azza. Can he find anything more? He's already taking down the support. Absolute is out. Darlick has to flash. Oh, Darlick no. has flashed as well. And he'll take down Tiger. Solary find three. And there spawns the Baron. And a bush play that Oplon were going for goes terribly wrong as Keo finds an insane ultimate with that call of the Forge God. And all you have now is Pang trying to run interference, trying to be annoying to see if he can get them off. But this just seems inevitable, Austin. Pang can't do anything about it. And just like that, the early lead from Oplon is lost. Oh, Pang forced into that stopwatch, but that means that he can't get into the pit. What a comeback taking place right now for Team Solary. They'll find themselves a couple kills. They get the Baron, and now everything has swung into their favor. And we're going to see it here, the bush play. Keo realizes they're all there, says, oh my goodness, thank you so much. As a triple knockup with that glacial Rocked is just so good. Despite the best intentions of Darlick with that exploding cast, it was just not enough. Tiger and Pang weren't actually able to do any damage. They had to back off. And look at that, Tiger. Just living 80 carry life. <laughs> Outskilled. Yeah, I saw the flash down, so I assume Scarlet flashed off screen while I was watching the river fight. But no, he was just in range of the unleashed power. Yes, and he sir. let it fly. And Tiger won't be able to survive through it. So everything changing up. I mean, this has just been the Team Oplon story, unfortunately, beat down where they have incredible early games. They look so confident. They look so good. And you always bring up the question, is this it? Is this the game where they finally start to get some of their macro on point? Well, at the moment, it looks like it's going to have to be a no, unless they have some great comeback mechanics left in them. And they're certainly not out of it, but they are going to be down about 3K. That was evened out just a few minutes ago. And we'll see exactly what Solary have in mind for us. They're looking for a play, and nice. it's going to be Absolute that sets it up. Joko uses the Crescent Guard and will flash, but eats the Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Here oh, comes the Keo. Re Keo looking for the knockup. Tiger oh, in trouble. No, the hello. hook is so good. That's the double with the scatter of the week, and it looks like a third. Darlick is left all alone. That's the third. Joko finds it. Team Solary take down three, and now can ignite the push. Keo's just been out of his mind with these Ord ultimates. It's just the impossible for Oplon to play these fights, especially when they group up the way that they do it at this point. Joko, he's just running them down. He wants to see if he can get that kill on Pang while the rest of his team continue to apply this pressure. And I love this. Scarlet already moved to the bottom side, using that Baron buff, pushing these minions through so that you take one turret, you take the blue buffs, and now this next turret is under threat. Scarlet gonna grab that. It's gotta be his reward after setting up the last team yeah. fight with a beautiful QE. Scatter of the week really doing tons of damage. And well, we get tons of damage there as he even drops the ultimate on Darlick and he mm -hmm. ends up losing a huge majority of that health bar. Pang's gonna try to clear out top. I'm sure would love to be able to grab this top lane tower. And I think he's going to be able to. This looks like this dragon is gonna be completely conceded and that is fine. Team Oplon have already secured two of the early ones. This would only be the second dragon here for Team Solary, but I'm sure they wanna try to use and squeeze this Baron power play out just a little bit more and maybe try to take down the tier two in the bot side. Right, Azza, he's gonna go ahead and solo the Drake for that exact reason, and that's gonna be it. The second one, two in a row for Team Solary. Although you're right, uh, it's not as big a deal. It's not like they're close to the soul, but Op1, they were doing so good in this early game, and this is where sometimes we ha we see it happen with teams. You start off strong, you get two early dragons, and all of a sudden the enemy team starts stacking them, and then the fights start falling apart. And then before you know it, four of the same dragons shows up on the enemy team's side here. And with this lead, I can't even imagine how Oplon are going to be able to find their way back in. A lot of it's going to be on Brunus or Darlick to kick or knock somebody into the team. We'll be able to find just a bit of damage, but I think Solary playing it safe. They don't want to overcommit. They don't have that Baron any longer. Probably sitting on a good amount of gold as well. So they're going to take this moment, clear out some camps, take the Scuttle Crab, and spend all of this gold. It'll be interesting to see what items come through here as everyone bases beat down. It's got to be something insane. We're already seeing some stopwatches come through as well. And I mean, man, we're getting to this point where Keo, he's very, very tanky at the moment here. He's two items. 
getting pretty close to that level 14 mark. One more level and he can start upgrading items. You got to imagine Asa is probably going to recede. Ornament number one, as that's going to be so much damage coming through here. Yeah, I expect him to Woo. probably try to farm out a little bit more. I have to imagine he's waiting for that IE power spike and might just need a tad bit more gold so that he can secure it. But maybe they don't want to wait. They want to pull the trigger. Pang, no Yo. flash. Caught out in the midway, but will be able to find a beautiful place lantern. However, will be at the cost of Darlick. That's the CC. That's the hook. He does flash body slam away, the but charge. you can't get away from that. One more lantern comes out, but it's not enough. Joko secures the kill, but now Joko actually in some trouble. He will go down one Shut for down. one. Jungler for top lane at the moment. And now Solary are just going to have to go to the sideways of Scarlet's actually just been here the whole time. Yeah, that means Offlon, they can keep pushing. You can see absolute fishing for some of these hooks, but Solary, they're backing off. They know they got what they wanted here. Even if it is one for one, you have Scarlet picking up more gold on the other side of the map here. And overall, Solary still very much in control of this game here. You can see it, even though they haven't cleared up that much vision on the top side of the map. After this reset, they can very happily walk into the river and clear it up. We have Baron in less than a minute. Of course, what both of these teams are going to be playing for an offline it just feels like they're running out of time running out of time i mean tiger would have to go just completely bonkers sicko in a mode. team fight sicko mode indeed i mean you would need something special but first we'll take another look here at the engage from solary i think the whole game it's just been the keo show i know he's playing orn but honestly these call of the forge gods have been incredible just setting the team up and half the time with steelback needs to follow up he's been on point as well a little mixy in the early game in the laning phase but i think steelback has also really managed to turn it up and then you see joko just getting pulled in with a death sentence as the Sleepy Chubble Bubble actually landed as he was engaging, which was a little bit unfortunate, so really didn't have a way to walk himself out. Teammates were too far away, but that's all set and fine. They're all back on the map here, and now we have the Baron also alive and active. As is going to try to take away some of that vision. Nice dodge here from Joko. Has that caressing guard back up here to keep him safe in case they do look for a full-on engage, but first, Take the right steps here, beat down, clear out the mid wave, get that pressure, force the opposition to clear it, and allow yourself to move in here first to start taking away that vision that was set up. That is right, that is a step by step guide to neutral objectives in League of Legends. Wow, absolute was almost absolutely ruined, but he manages to walk away. But the thing is now, still, Oplon, they are behind. They aren't able to actually find their way into the pit. And at this point, they have to group because they need the numbers. But it also means Keo is just going to have these insane Call of the Forge cards. You can already tell he's looking for it, Austin. He's about to blow the horn. He's just waiting to see <laughs> where the rest of them are. He sure is looking for the carries. It is important to note that everyone, at least on the side of Team Oplon, like Pang, like Tiger, do have their summoners available. So can work themselves out of some of these difficult situations in case an engage does end up coming through. But you really do need Tiger to stay alive the entire time if you're going to be able to win this fight. And look at this, just playing through this fog, just playing through there this it is. window. And now it's time to pull the trigger. Bang Another triple. Up. That's the ultimate. Joko goes all in. Tiger is low. Tiger is down. It's time for Azza to pop off as he gets excited. Two players dropping for Team Oplon, and now they're working on the base. And this could be it. No AD carry, no support, and Solary have everything they need, Austin. They can look to pressure the end if they want to. Brunez, you're going to need a big kick, buddy. You're going to need to look for someone squishy. Another hook lands. Goodbye, Pang. Maybe goodbye, Brunez. He's going to be able to get the Sterix gauge, proc, and shield, but Darlick is fairly tanky doing his best to keep them off of it. A lot of low health bars right now on Solary, but there's the ultimate. Brunus is low, but he's able to take down one. Brunus takes down two, but Azza is alive. Will it be enough? Absolute is back up. Will he be able to stall this one out? He has his 80 carry in a second, but no, he gets melted. He gets shredded. And Tiger in a one versus three has to try to rip through the remaining players. But Joko's like, go ahead. I'm hitting the Nexus, but I'll take you down just because. A triple kill in the end as Solary get their second win.